Rolex is synonymous with opulence, accuracy, and enduring sophistication. This is more than just a brand, it's a legendary tale. Valued at approximately $8 billion, this horological giant has a rich history that traces back to a determined teenager who overcame adversity. Once upon a time, there was a remarkable journey that unfolded before our very eyes. It was a tale of a company called Rolex, whose unwavering determination, relentless innovation, and unwavering commitment to excellence paved the way for the creation of a billion-dollar empire. In the small town of Kumbach, Germany, on March 22, 1881, a remarkable individual by the name of Hans Wilsdorf came into the world. His parents, Anna and Johann Daniel Wilsdorf, were about to witness the birth of a visionary who would leave an indelible mark on the world of timekeeping. He was born into a family that operated a business that was doing reasonably well. He happened to be the middle child among his siblings. Unfortunately, Hans experienced a series of heartbreaking events in his early life. His mother's untimely death in 1892 was followed by the passing of his father a year later. This left him as an orphan at the tender age of 12. Hans was under the guardianship of his mother's brothers, who decided to enroll him in a renowned boarding school in Bavaria, Germany, Emma Stonem Coburg. His life took an unexpected turn, presenting him with a set of challenges. He found it difficult to blend in and faced frequent exclusion because of his religious beliefs. Hans discovered that this early experience taught him the importance of being independent and accountable, traits that would greatly benefit him in the future. Hans, a brilliant student, displayed exceptional aptitude in various subjects, including mathematics and languages, with a particular focus on French and English. His insatiable thirst for languages would eventually shape the course of his future endeavors. Throughout his time in school, he formed a close bond with a companion hailing from Switzerland. This friend would captivate him with captivating tales of the enchanting Swiss city of La Chaux de Fonds, celebrated for its rich history in the art of watchmaking. This experience ignited Hans' interest in watches and the watchmaking industry. When Hans was just 19 years old, he made the bold decision to escape the confines of his boarding school and embark on a thrilling adventure of his own. He landed a position as an apprentice at a renowned international pearl exporting company, immersing himself in the intricacies of the business and reaping a respectable income. Yet, Hans had aspirations that reached far beyond this position. He found himself in Geneva, Switzerland, a place that had always captivated his imagination. There, he embarked on a new chapter of his life, joining the ranks of Kuno Cortan, a renowned watchmaking company. Once upon a time, Hans embarked on his journey in the world of watchmaking. Thanks to his mastery of the English language, which he honed during his academic years, he secured a role as an English correspondent and clerk. Every day, he diligently wound hundreds of pocket watches, immersing himself in the world of watchmaking and gaining invaluable insights along the way. Regrettably, Hans's tenure at Kuno Cortan came to an abrupt end when he was compelled to return to Germany to fulfill his military obligations. Hans joined another prominent timepiece firm in London after his military duty. He focused on increasing the company's revenues in this case. Hans quickly became a watch industry leader. Florence Francis May Crotty, his future wife, met him then. Hans relentlessly pursued his watchmaker business. Alfred James Davis, his brother-in-law, shared his goals. Alfred, an astute man, trusted Hans's excitement and invested in the project. Wilsdorf and Davis Limited opened in 1905, becoming Rolex. They formed a partnership with the renowned Swiss watch company, Hermann Egler, bringing in movements from Switzerland and putting them together in England. This partnership signaled the start of their quest to craft wristwatches of exceptional quality and dependability. Back in 1908, the visionary Hans Wilsdorf took the initiative to officially register the name Rolex as a trademark for his esteemed company, Wilsdorf & Davis Limited. With the growing reputation of Wilsdorf & Davis Limited's exceptional wristwatches, Hans Wilsdorf astutely grasped the immense possibilities that wristwatches held, surpassing the conventional pocket watches of yore. In his vision, he saw a future where wristwatches could completely replace pocket watches. Driven by this revelation, he poured all his efforts into crafting a wristwatch that would embody precision, reliability, and practicality for everyday wear. In 1914, Rolex made history by becoming the first wristwatch to receive a chronometer rating from Switzerland. London's Q Observatory was renowned for its exceptional precision, earning it a prestigious Class A certificate. With these accolades, Rolex solidified its reputation as a trustworthy brand. Yet, once more, misfortune befell humanity amidst the chaos of World War I. In a surprising move, 
the British government had decided to implement a 33% tax on companies based in Great Britain that engage in international trade. This decision was expected to have significant implications for businesses operating in the country. In 1915, Hans Wilsdorf made a strategic decision to move the company's headquarters from London to Beale, Switzerland. This move was driven by a desire to evade taxes and navigate the rising anti-German sentiment during the war. With this move, the company's name was also changed to the Rolex Watch Corporation Limited. Geneva has been Rolex's headquarters since 1919. Crafting watch movements in Beale and transporting them to Geneva were the company's main activities. The highest accuracy and quality were ensured by thorough verification and finishing in Geneva. Rolex Oyster's 1926 debut was a testament to Hans Wildorf's relentless pursuit of technological improvement. This groundbreaking model launched a water-resistant wristwatch owing to its well-sealed casing. This amazing feat changed the watch business. A 1927 Rolex Oyster promotion showed Hans Wildorf's marketing prowess. Londoner Mercedes Gleitz was swimming across the English Channel. After much persuasion, Hans convinced her to wear a Rolex Oyster for her risky swim. Despite the swim's failure, the Rolex Oyster emerged from the cold water functional. Hans spotted a chance to advertise in the London Daily Mail based on the public's fascination with this event. Mercedes Gleitz's swimsuit garnered worldwide attention for Rolex. In order to boost Rolex's brand image, Hans cleverly displayed Rolex oysters in fish bowls with live fish in authorized dealership windows. This creative marketing strategy helped Rolex retain its water resistance reputation. The heritage of Rolex was shaped by Hans Wildorf's marketing skills. He and Evelyn Lane, the most sought after British model of 1928, created a phenomenal alliance. And their goal? Promote Rolex watches' ageless beauty. Rolex's water resistance was reinforced by Lane wearing a watch in a fishbowl for their commercial campaign. The Rolex Oyster Perpetual, released in 1931, was another breakthrough by Rolex. Waterproof and self-winding, this model was a marvel. Rolex launched a date just in 1945. First, to beautifully display the month via a little window on its dial, this timepiece created history. In 1933, Rolex watches made headlines again for their role in a daring flight over Mount Everest. Crew members smiled as they checked their wrists. Rolex watches, their favorite timepieces, were still ticking well after their travels. The legendary Malcolm Campbell set a 300 mile per hour speed record in 1935. He wore his Rolex watch proudly throughout this incredible performance. These events solidified Rolex's reputation for dependability and durability in ordinary conditions. In 1953, Rolex introduced the Submariner, a watch designed for undersea explorers. This model's movable bezel helped track dive times, and it could withstand depths of up to 330 feet. As a diving watch standard, the Rolex Submariner became renowned. Rolex constantly created clocks that are perfect for experts in many fields. To help pilots manage numerous time zones, the GMT Master was invented in 1955. Racing fans' ideal timekeeping companion was the Cosmograph Daytona in 1963, owing to its flawless chronograph. Explorer was introduced in 1953 for bold adventurers. Famous climbers like Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay used Rolex watches. Association with daring accomplishments improved Rolex's durability and trustworthiness. Rolex's century-long journey is a tribute to Hans Wildorf's commitment. Hans' perseverance and imaginative outlook helped Rolex become one of the world's most prestigious watchmakers. Rolex's successful legacy is built on its commitment to innovation, accuracy, and durability. Presently, Rolex watches provide more than only timekeeping. They symbolize success, excellence, and timeless elegance. For over a century, Rolex has been a symbol of exquisite workmanship and elegance, enthralling the world with its clocks. As we celebrate 100 years of the company, Rolex's story extends beyond timekeeping. It represents the obsession with perfection, the triumph of innovative ideas, and the legacy of a brand synonymous with luxury and distinction.